Good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for your patience. We uh, Technology is not always our friend, uh, but thank you, Alice Fern, who's working behind the scenes to uh, get our connection up and running. So happy Wednesday to you all. Uh, I'm Andrew Asato, your host for the evening and, and uh, your executive director for Susan G. Komen. And it is with such a pleasure that I get to introduce both a friend and colleague and a huge supporter of Komen, uh, Sue Best, who's a mass, who holds a master's degree in social work is a licensed clinical social worker and also a, a, a dean within the Lutheran Church here in, here in Oregon. So I, uh, I'm i so happy to have you here, Sue, and I know that there are people listening who know you well. Um, you're an icon in this community and we thank you. You were on television today with Jennifer Hoff uh, sharing about what we're talking about tonight and that's finding hope. Um, the, finding hope in the time of a pandemic, uh, this COVID-19. and so. Uh, before you begin a presentation that you put together, a lovely one for our, for our viewers, and I know you're going to ask for feedback and comments, uh, why don't you first tell us a little bit about yourself and your background? Sure. Um, Andy, it's, it's such a pleasure to be here, and I love my connection to Komen. You are such a presence for women and men who have breast cancer in their families and for professionals like me who have had the great pleasure to be affiliated with you. Um, I have a really special interest in this topic and um, some of it's humorous only from the standpoint that I'm from Chicago and from a very young age, I've been a Chicago Cubs fan. And if any of you know about the Cubs, it has taught me a lot about hope. So um, <laughs> even after a hundred years, they could win a world series. So they could. <laughs> I started at a very young age. Um, so in terms of my background, I've been a long time oncology and palliative care social worker and had the great good fortune that I spent years getting to work with women with breast cancer. I spent many years working at Legacy Good Sam and had um, the amazing experience of being a co-facilitator for a support group for women with breast cancer for 15 years. And that gave me such insight about what it's like to have breast cancer. I then myself was diagnosed in 2006, um, and I had a great head start in understanding so much about this disease. But like all of you who've had breast cancer, you never know what it's like till you face that. So I've learned so much from that. Um, and also in my role as a deacon in the Lutheran Church, um, my special interest is health ministry. And so I continue to have contact with people who are facing breast cancer and it continues to be just a great passion for me. One of the ways I express my passion for breast cancer is I'm part of an amazing sister called the sisterhood called the Pink Phoenix Dragon Boat Team. And we are the first all breast cancer dragon boat team in the United States dating back to 1997. And so we are a hundred women strong, ranging in age from the twenties. We had a member who was 95 and I think it added 10 years to her life to paddle with our team. And so that's the context which I'm bringing tonight. And when Andy and I talked about my being here, we talked about the whole topic of hope. And so while you're listening to me, I want you to do something, which is I want you to think about what are the ways you are finding hope right now and that you are experiencing inspiration and you have ways to give us feedback, but you're gonna also have time for questions. But I just really want you to hold on to that right now um, because we've not lived through a time. We can't say, golly, the last time we had a pandemic, this is how I felt. So I just want you to hold on to that. But, and with that, um, Alice, will you start to share the screen? And I just have a very brief um, PowerPoint presentation that will just show you some of what we're looking at. You can um, show the next slide. So there's really many ways you can define hope. And really it emanates from within you. I can't define how you feel hopeful of what that means for you. But just the first is just the actual definition from a dictionary, which is it's an optimistic state of mind with an expectation of positive outcomes with respect to events and circumstances in one's life at, or the world at large. But as I said, it's for you, it's really, it's unique for each of us. So what grounds you when you struggle? Um, it often can come from your beliefs, your values, your sense of spirituality. We are all spiritual beings and we might express that differently. Or if you consider you, yourself a person who has faith, it really is discovered from within. It's really influenced by what has happened in your life. Maybe what, how did your family view life? And did you come from a family that kind of really took a hopeful perspective on life? But also how have your past experiences affected your view of hope? 
It's not at all about being positive <clears throat> as it often arises in response to loss. And when I talk about hope, it isn't just we're talking about the good and happy things in life because often it emanates from very profound sense of loss and grief. And sometimes that hope may seem really dim. It may just be that dim light at the end of the tunnel. And hope also really is a companion to strength, to grief, to love, to trust. Alice, can you share the next slide, please? <clears throat> I just did a little looking around to see how do other people define hope? And I found just an amazing collection of definitions and from Emily Dickinson who said, hope is the thing with feathers that perches in the soul and sings the tune without the words and never stops at all. Martin Luther King and his inspiring words of saying, we can accept finite disappointment, but we never lose infinite hope. Our former president Barack Obama, the best way to not feel hopeless is to get up and do something, which we certainly are seeing, aren't we right now? Don't wait for good things to happen to you. If you go out and make some good things happen, you will fill the world with hope and you will fill yourself with hope. Barbara Kingsolver, who is an accomplished author, said the very least you can do in your life is figure out what you hope for. And the most you can do is to live inside that hope, not admire it from a distance, but live right into it under its roof. Okay, next slide, please. So for me, this is an example. This is in my neighborhood. And spring didn't get the notice that we're having coronavirus. And that gives me hope. The fact that we don't have much traffic outside. I live on a very urban street in Portland, um, which lots of cyclists and bikes and, and, and cars. I'm hearing the birds in ways I've never heard them before. So that gives me hope. And these tulips, that life is going on. Next slide, Alice. So some more definitions, Thomas Merton, who is a, a theologian, you don't need to know precisely what is happening or exactly where it is all going. What you need to recognize is the possibilities and challenges offered by the present moment and to embrace them with courage, with faith, and with hope. Elizabeth Gilbert, who wrote the book, Eat, Pray, Love, had a beautiful quote about hope and where she talks about that deep grief sometimes is almost like a specific location, a coordinate on a map of time. When you are standing in that forest of sorrow, you cannot imagine that you could ever find your way to a better place. But if someone can assure you that they themselves have stood in that very same place and now have moved on, sometimes this will bring hope. And boy, doesn't that speak to how, with any challenge we face in our life, how we are so much better when we are in community and what an amazing community that the sisterhood and brotherhood of breast cancer survivors and people going and experiencing breast cancer is. And Thich Nhat Hanh, who's a Buddhist monk says, hope is important because it can make the present moment less difficult to bear. If we believe that tomorrow will be better, we can bear a hardship today. So lots of amazing words of wisdom from many different viewpoints, all speaking of different aspects of hope. Okay, Alice, next slide. So this is what a dragon boat looks like. This is a beautiful night on Vancouver Lake some years ago. And my team had practiced on Vancouver Lake um, for a little while. And this just, this picture makes me feel peaceful and hopeful. And next slide, Alice. So I wanted to think also about what are the ways to help you discover hope and how, especially in light of what we're living through, just some suggestions. And I bet you have some great ones too that I would love for you to share. So the first one is really encouraging you strongly to limit the time that you watch or listen to or read about COVID. We could do this 24 seven, right? There's so much to learn, so much to read, but it can be so overwhelming. So I really want you to limit what you're doing in this respect. And if you need help for those of you that are going through breast cancer treatment or a breast cancer diagnosis or struggling in any way, you have a healthcare team. And even though you may not be able to see them in person, I know that most health systems are discovering ways to connect with you. There are still triage nurses, 
There are still nurse navigators. There are still oncology social workers and physicians and pharmacists and people there to help you. Don't shy away from dealing with the emotions. As I talked about, this isn't just about being upbeat and happy. Really, a lot of it is dealing with what's in front of us because if we don't, that can pile up on us. And yes, that may be really hard to dig into some of those things. But again, if you need help with that, there are people at the ready. For many people, it's not just having breast cancer, but other parts of your life have been disrupted with a lot of financial pressures, with a lot of things going on, with the changes that are occurring in your life. And there are many resources. And here I've just listed a few examples of Komen's website, um, the, the Oregon Health Authority, they can send you an email every day with updates about, about COVID. 211 is an amazing resource that you can look online or call on the phone. There are various health systems, hospitals and clinics have information on their websites as well as county health departments. The next thing is how do you and where are you finding inspiration? I'll tell you one of my greatest inspirations right now was a story that I read about a nurse at Lenox, Hosp Lenox Hill Hospital in New York. She is a float nurse and found herself going to the emergency room but also working in a unit where it was mostly people who had COVID. So it happened to be that in the emergency room, that's where you're seeing people in crisis. And then when they leave the emergency room, you don't always know what has happened. Well, she made, a, she made a decision to go find out how those patients had done. There was one day in, that, in the emergency department that they had intubated five people, which meant they put them on breathing machines or ventilators. And what she found out is that many of them had recovered, that they could, she could go back to the emergency room and say, guess what? These people are getting better. Some of them even left. So it, she called that a hope huddle at the change of shift with most healthcare uh, facilities, you have to do a huddle with the next shift. So this was great ways for people to find that there is hope. Stay connected. I am so amazed at all the ways people are figuring out to stay connected. In ways, I'm one of eight kids and I have to tell you, we are connected in ways we haven't been in a long time and most of my siblings are in Chicago. And who are the other groups that you're connected with, your friends, your neighbors. I've heard of, of virtual happy hours or coffee clutches. I've heard people getting together in their driveways at least six to 10 feet apart. What are your spiritual or faith communities doing? There's lots of things, that, lots of organizations that are live streaming meetings or worship services. And what other groups are you part of? Also, it may be a serious time, but find fun and humor. What are the things that you are doing that are still fun that you can enjoy? I'm hearing about lots of creativity of people who gardens are looking incredible. People are discovering how to play the guitar, do all sorts of things. So what are the creative juices that maybe you have that have been hiding? And a big one is how do you extend compassion and grace to yourself? This is a really hard time. We are all under undue pressure that we've don't have a reference point to say, this is what I did before because this is all new for us. So I would say, extend a lot of self-compassion to yourself and then discover joy. Where do you find it? And Alice, if you'll show the next picture, this is one of my greatest sources of joy. This is my puppy, Alice, who is, for, is not here tonight in my home because she would be probably jumping on my lap and licking my face. So what are the ways that you are finding joy in your lives and make sure to embrace them? So I'm interested to know if any of you put in our chat box, what are the things that you're feeling inspired by or where are you finding joy? And um, so I don't know if there's any of those comments, Alice and Andy, or Andy, if you have some questions you also wanna uh, ask me. Yes, thank, Sue, thank you so much for sharing that uh, and sharing your thoughts and your perspective and guidance. You just reconnected to me to one of my favorite quotes by Emily Dickinson that I used to recite back when I was even in high school wow. that I, I found in a class. And uh, uh, thank you. Uh, you. You connected me with some hope where I where I can find that and recite it myself. Huh. I uh, While we, we are, again, we're talking to Sue Best, um, a licensed clinical social worker who also uh, by profession does palliative care and also is a deacon with the Lutheran Church and uh, a great friend and colleagues. Thank you again for being with us this evening. Uh, and a survivor as well, breast cancer survivor. And a breast cancer survivor. And a, and a yeah. champion of Pink Phoenix, <laughs> the Dragon Boat team. 
Uh, as always, uh, please do post your questions. Alice Fern will share those when I'm done. And as, as Sue asked, if you have ways that you have found hope that you can share with others who are on the call with us, uh, we certainly would most welcome that and we can share those uh, with Alice's help. But I, you know, how do, how do you look beyond the current state of things where, how do you look beyond this time where there's so many unknowns and, and, and how we can see hope when we don't know what tomorrow's gonna bring? Well, you know, cancer is a great metaphor for that, Andy, because for those of you who have had breast cancer or are currently dealing with breast cancer, you don't know. There's no guarantees. Even for women like myself who had stage one cancer, you nothing is for sure. And so I think you live your life as you did before. I, I'd say lean into the things that have been strategies for you about how did you deal with your own cancer experience? How are you dealing with your own cancer experience? I have a, a dear friend who now also has pancreatic cancer. And for her, what's giving her hope is just, oh, okay, I got through my chemo, okay. I could check that off. I've had chemo treatment number three. She got some great advice from the staff yesterday about nutrition because she was struggling with nutrition. So try to do whatever you can to feel some sense of control in your life. What are the things that feel really solid for you and lean into that? And because you're right, Andy, um, there's still a lot of mystery about COVID. There's still, we don't know if we'll have a second wave, but just do some things that will help you lower your anxiety, whatever that might be. Um, Again, limiting the, the amount of time you read about COVID, I think is a really great thing. What are the things that you do when you're stressed with other things? Is it meditation? Is it yoga? Is it chatting with your friends, which maybe you can do on Zoom or FaceTime? Um, is it, for me, I watch really corny Hallmark movies. I'm sorry to admit it, but I do. Or I watch Seinfeld, the old Seinfeld. So do what are things that make you feel calmer, make you feel like you have some onus of control? It's, it, I appreciate you sharing that. It is very easy when we are holed up at home. Um, Netflix is, is doing quite well, but we can, we can very much find ourselves um, sucked into the news cycle. And mm -hmm. that, that, as Dr. Korea last week brought this up, as well as Dr. Johnson uh, the week prior, it's, a, it's an ongoing theme we need to continue to remember because it's easy not to, not to do that. Um, yeah. Sure. You, you, your, your, your comparison that breast cancer was, was an important one too. I, I was on a call today, with one of my peers on the East Coast uh, in Virginia, she has stage four cancer and got COVID. And she is one of the most hopeful people I know on our, on our leadership. And, and she continues to give us hope saying this is a journey much like what we are going through with the uncertainty of cancer. Um, so it, it, it resonates very, 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 it's, it's very resonating for, for I know people listening and, and viewing this right now. Uh, for those who are diagnosed with breast cancer, you, you answered this to some degree, but they obviously, as you're seeing people with all types of illnesses, um, including breast cancer, who cannot be around their loved ones physically, what might be some ways they can find support and hope? Well, I think even if they can't be around their loved ones physically, they can still be connecting to their loved ones. And so what are the ways that you can do that? Um, and I, I'd say, don't be afraid to reach out to people that have lent, who've offered you support. I have a hunch that many of you have friends who said, if you ever need something, let me know. And this would be the time to lean into that kind of uh, support that's available. Um, so there are some creative ways to connect. And I would say, even if that doesn't mean you can get a hug from your daughter, your granddaughter, do what you can to be connected to them. And don't be, don't be isolated, don't be alone. Sure, absolutely. I think this is a question you're asking uh, to our viewers, but I'll ask before we go to our viewers who hopefully are sharing this, uh, are there any additional ways uh, people can spread hope in your opinion to others during this time? And then we'll go to uh, our, our viewers and their, their comments and questions. Yeah. I, think, I think reaching out to other people, I think um, the most inspiring things I've seen is when someone decided to reach out to someone else. Examples are we've had um, businesses who've reached out to people in the hospital or healthcare settings or in grocery stores to really show their appreciation 
Or do you have a friend who is housebound and maybe sending them a card, a call, um, anything that you can think of that you know that has lifted you, maybe you could extend that to someone else, which in turn gives us a sense of like, wow, I could do something during this time of feeling uncertain and this time of feeling kind of helpless. So if there's anything that feels like that might help you to help someone else. Thank you, Sue. I want to turn it over, Alice. If, if you have uh, anyone who's provided comments uh, or questions, can we share those? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we have a comment from Allison when talking about ways that um, they find hope um, and stay positive is through a gratitude journal. Mm -hmm. And then we had another comment from Dello who says, um, I've been making masks to save others' lives. I feel like I was saved to do that. Nice. Yes, I know Delo actually. She's also a member of Pink Phoenix and she is a mask rock star and has been making them and making very cool looking masks too. Thanks Delo for doing that. Yes, thank you. Then we have a comment from Tony Mountain who says, very nice Sue, thank you for sharing your expertise with all of us going through this pandemic and providing hope. Tony, thank you for joining us. <laughs> And for those of you that may know Tony, she is an over 35 year survivor, um, has just, her presence has touched so many lives in the Portland metro area from her work when she worked at Nordstrom's and fitting women with prostheses and bras from her years of work at Komen. And then maybe Andy, you could speak about the fund that she helped start that is helping to support women in need. Yes, we, we, uh, we started the Tony Mountain Fund when she retired from Komen, and uh, she continues to this day to be a champion and raising funds for what is our treatment assistance program, our treatment access program, and talk about someone who's continuing to provide hope. That assistance program of providing gas, food, lodging, we're not providing funds for groceries or paying a bill that's giving people hope when they're in the middle of treatment and they're either losing their job or losing insurance or underinsured and Tony Mountain has been the absolute champion of that. And we're just honored to have her faith and support. Uh, even, in, in, even in her retirement, she continues to bring hope in her way. So thank you, Tony. We have another comment from Michelle who says, I find hope watching the birds going about normal activities from my deck. They are still building nests and eating seeds. Mm -hmm. I would second that. I am loving the birds. So there's a woodpecker outside the, the door who is very persistent and starts working early in the morning. I'm not as happy with that bird, but <laughs> I have to say that I, it's amazing. It's just like I said, they didn't get the memo that there was a COVID pandemic going on. And it's, I think it's a reminder to all of us so that the hope of, for the future is that life does go on. And yes, we are having this unusual time that we've never experienced before, but what are the ways we can lean into what our life is and has meant to us and can, will continue to in the midst of having to be um, sheltered in place? And we have another comment from Allison who says, I also enjoy listening to instrumental music. Mm -hmm. And I can imagine, Allison, that that helps just provide a calm kind of presence for you in your home or wherever you are listening. And so again, that that is a great way to kind of just stay grounded. I love the suggestion about a gratitude journal. And I think that's one way to really look at in the time of all this daunting news and wondering is anything going right to just pause and go, oh yeah, what am I grateful for today? Wow, we had a, we've had really beautiful weather in Portland. I've been really grateful for that, uh, to be able to go out for walks and bike rides and so, hold on to those little precious things that are still going well and still important in your life. Mm -hmm. Then we have a question from Kristen who says, can you talk about what palliative care encompasses? I was recently diagnosed in January and I'm still trying to grasp what this team is doing for me. I panicked at first thinking it was like a pre-hospice, which felt really scary. Any information is so appreciated. Oh, of course, you know, it's such a common question because most people think that palliative care means end of life. And it's really, it's a big umbrella 
and absolutely end of life care and hospice care is part of palliative care, but it's really the word palliate means to alleviate. And so I listened to a great podcast yesterday and it was a palliative care physician from USC who said, we're here to help with suffering and suffering not of all kinds. So physical suffering, your emotional distress, spiritual needs. So a palliative care team is interdisciplinary and includes physicians, nurses, social workers, chaplains, as kind of the core members of that team. And we're here to look at every aspect of your life and what your needs might be. Often some hallmarks are that palliative care physicians and nurse practitioners are experts in pain and symptom management. But we also are often called in when people are trying to make some difficult decisions. Um, you know, we could all have the same condition or be faced with the same medical crisis, but we might all make different decisions because we have different beliefs and values about what life means to us and what quality of life means to us. So often we're here just to be companions to you to help as you're trying to make some decisions about your care. I worked with a great physician who said, you know, we are a consultation team. We have no skin in the game and whatever you decide, we wanna support you. We wanna be your companions on this journey. So it's really about how can we best support you as you're going through a difficult time. So please know that there can be a lot of hope that comes from palliative care. And it's, we're just absolutely here to support you. Thank you, Sue. Um, the next comment is from Dr. Nathalie Johnson, who just wants to let you know that it's so great to see and hear you and great insight. Well, I have had the great good fortune to work with Dr. Johnson for many years when I worked at Legacy Good Sam. And Nathalie, you are such an amazing presence in this community and in this country for the work that you do. And I heard, which I'm not going to offer to do, that you sang when you were on a couple weeks ago, because that's how people, what they experience when you're doing surgery on them. So I hope that you are well, and I am so glad that you are here in our community. Then we have a couple of other comments that just came in. Um, one from Karen that says, thank you, Sue. You are such a kind and gentle force. I'm grateful to have worked with you. Oh, wow, well, thank you. And then from Aletha, thank you for the quotes. They are a source they are a source when the news stories are bleak. Hmm. And those are all the comments that have come in. Huh. I, I just, I, I am, I, to listen to the people who have commented on how they find hope and perhaps joy and, and the people that have commented, uh, we are surrounded by so many good people and we're so fortunate for that. And just having this opportunity for all of us on this call to even share, I mean, it's a session of finding hope really with each other. And, and that means so much. It, it it ends a day for me feeling far more, far much, far more hope than um, I perhaps began the day with. And and Sue, uh, you're you're such a, a force and a voice for all of us. And um, I get the pleasure to spend time with you too to find hope. Maybe not in person now over breakfast, mm -hmm. uh, but over coffee. So, if there aren't any more comments or questions, Sue, do you have any final thoughts that you wish to share before we wrap up? I want to remind people that don't feel like you've got to go through this by yourself. And there, we are really blessed in throughout Oregon and Southwest Washington have amazing healthcare providers and amazing oncologists, um, oncology nurses, uh, technicians, social workers, chaplains, all different specialties in oncology. And so they are really there to serve you. And if you are struggling, don't feel like you have to do this alone. There are also, I know that some of the support groups that are co-facilitated often by nurses, social workers, other members of organizations are still going on. And so don't be afraid to connect. Pink Phoenix helps be back on the water sometime. It's, we're not very happy that we have, we can't, but you know, you sit like right next to like 20 of your best friends so that um, please know that we're gonna be on the water someday and we would welcome you because it's an amazing experience and such a great source of support and exercise. But just be gentle with yourself, do the best you can and just know that every day that you're doing the best you can and don't be afraid to reach out for help. And I really wish you well. And we have a lot going on right now, but just try and stay focused find those little nuggets of hope, create your own hope huddle, like the nurse in Lenox Hill in 
New York of ways you can keep finding and discovering things within yourself. Such important and rich advice to share with us uh, to close the session. Uh, Sue earlier in the call mentioned in, in this meeting uh, shared a, a fair amount of resources. So I, I encourage people do go to comanoregon.org. Uh, most of those resources, if not all, are listed there with links and contact information. Again, at comanoregon.org. There's also information about our treatment assistance program. And there you will also find information about our upcoming uh, topics for this particular Health at Home series, which we're committed to continue every Wednesday at 7 p.m., uh, barring any technical difficulties. So again, thank you for your patience at the front end of this call and be well, be hopeful, um, find joy where you can, and we look forward to having you join us next week. Thanks, Andy. Thanks, Alice. Thanks.